نشفت یا رسول کریم آمین انشاءالله what we have from our audience from their YouTubes from emails from every every source shaykh Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi in your teachings you mentioned the Ashab al-Kahf are eternal stations. Please forgive my ignorance, is the reality of one of the Ashab al-Kahf that went to the market with the coin connected to the reality when Sayyidina Mahdi will reveal himself? And is any of the seven names of the wazir you mentioned a mu'min jinn? <laughs> How did you get to that, to that? Yeah, I don't know. Going to the marketplace, the revealing of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam, nice. How can I say that that's not so because that has a, a nice thought to it. That when Allah wanted them to proclaim their event because it's an event of faith, they went and realized that they're from a different time. The currency that they had was not from the time, was from the time and the emperor that was long forsaken and forgotten. So alhamdulillah that's a, 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 it's not a problem to make that analogy. But when you watch again social media it's very funny their understanding of Sayyidina Mahdi that he, he's going to come out and do public opinion. He's going to have some people making TikToks and, and, and convincing people, please follow Sayyidina Mahdi And I, I think people have absolutely <laughs> no understanding for what's coming. That the world will be in such an upheaval and, and such a disaster state and, and atomic bombs everywhere, life and death in complete shambles. Six out of seven people upon this earth will have passed away. So there's no question of what's coming and it's not coming by any type of social media. Means the people at that stage who have survived and they became one of those sevenths means they had been through so much difficulty and they have so much faith that in each type of event they understood that the madad and protection that comes to them, how to survive every type of attack. How to survive. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. The attack of these weapons, their sounds, their frequencies, they're, the, whatever these dajjals are planning to do requires a people whom have enormous faith. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, amanu, not the people only who believed but their belief kept becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. That you'll see these energies that come into rooms to attack people. When people are feeling an energy and they don't feel good, for those whom can see there's like a shadow and a cloud of energy coming in and it begin to attack a person and they don't know why they're feeling sick and why they're starting to have pain. And it's like an energy coming in but because they can't see it they don't understand. But when they begin to train and understand in the trainings of energy they understand their lifeline is their madad and that they're quick to immediately put themselves like a fireman jumping into a position ready to fight the fire. Immediately they go into their madad, they ask for the support, they ask for the support that the shaykh has taught them from the jinn world and from the awliya world whom are among the jinn. 
and how to make their madad, how to enter into that state so that those energies can come to be present with that servant. They must have mastered those states for if they're going to survive what's coming upon this earth. So this, this is not going to be something where everything is great and Imam Mahdi comes on TikTok to say, please come to me to Mecca and take your bayat. You'd be lucky who even survived, imagine what they went through to survive that state. What level of faith because it's a, it's a great filtering that's coming. You know the harvest is a lot of bushes everywhere and most of those bushes are not needed by Allah So a great harvesting begins in which they begin to plow the field and people they go to the waste like a dead bushes on the side of a, a, a farm. Means there's such a cleansing that coming upon this earth that takes away everything. So it's, it's whatever we're seeing of social media it's for us a, a litmus of understanding. Mawlana Shaykh described once, why I need to use spiritual power if I can open up a newspaper because he would have a newspaper. And there was a guy in Michigan who was famous for getting 500 newspapers. Once a week he would come, he had like obsession with newspapers and he would come with newspapers from every part of the world until the internet started to come and we would make fun of him, say, ah, so and so. You know we can do all of this now by apps. We have Al Jazeera, we have RT, we have all these apps now, so his… his, his his necessity became obsolete. But Mawlana Shaykh was absorbing all this information. Not because he needs to be informed of it but it gives us a sense of what's happening upon the earth and how fast it's becoming corrupted, how fast it's going to burn, right? If you think… if you see everything lose its life form and lose its, its life reality. They've marked themselves, there's no more light in them. The, the, the light of existence is leaving people by the badness of what you see left behind. Like a stalk of a flower or a tree, when they see a tree was very beautific. When they want to come to cut down the tree what do they do? They look and they say, this tree no longer looks beautific, the green has gone, all that's left is a brown dried stump, what was once beautific leaves are just, what would you call them? Rubble, dried up shrubs. So immediately they look at that tree, that tree's going down. So now for social media when you look you say, oh these communities are going down, these communities are going down. These things are all going down. If this is the nation and this is Islam and this how they're talking, they're all going down. These are now trees that are no longer alive but very much dead and all that is remaining of them is a hollow shell of ignorance. So social media tells us something very bad is coming very fast. Not that it's informative at all, at all, it's complete rubbish and garbage. But it's showing you how fast the garden is dying and as a result these are not the things that will be surviving. That's why Prophet describes six out of seven will be perishing which is a heavy understanding, heavy understanding. So the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi has to do with those whom were stayed alive during all of these testings. So they are not ordinary people. What Allah then describes the people of tafakkur now coming in this surah? It was one year ago we talked about this surah. None know it except the people of tafakkur. Means what? It's not the mass. It's not the ordinary, it's the extraordinary. Ordinary people are not surviving these events. Look at, look at, we look at social media and tells you, 
These are like a garden that now all oh, the trees are dead, this is not a garden anymore. There's not guidance anymore, there's not any good manners anymore, this is just a dead garden everywhere. So this is not the ordinary, Allah described, no these people of tafakkur they're extraordinary, none know it but accept. So means those people whom accept means they're exceptional. That's why then it requires then these exceptional practices, meditate, contemplate, put your faith in action, do all the things that are necessary to make ourselves to become extraordinary, not ordinary. Ordinary is not going to survive anything, it's the extraordinary. The one whom could be sitting but now goes out and gives food. The one whom is sitting but now is trying to connect, trying to learn, who could be going out and doing many haram but sits and connects to the live broadcast. Because it's not the ordinary who will survive, it's extraordinary. And it's not for me, it's the hadith, six out of seven perish. So who are those one out of seven that survive? One seventh of humanity. If seven billion, less than one billion will remain upon this earth. How many of them are of an evil nature inflicting the harm upon everybody? Probably at least 600 million. So now your numbers became even smaller in the pocket of those whom believe because belief is not something you see anymore upon this earth. And not belief in which doesn't waver, it doesn't change, it says, no I'm not putting a dress on, no I'm not putting that inside my body. So means the numbers become smaller, smaller, smaller. That's why then these teachings and all of these realities for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi is not something easy, it has to be with the level of sincerity, level of spiritual practices, levels of energies that have been connected as a result of that connection and that fires, they're inspired to do good, to do right and to shield and protect themselves. So at night they defend themselves against negative attacks and they have to be trained in that understanding, not fearful of it and as a result their training gets stronger and then stronger and then stronger, inshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah After hearing last night's soba, I'm wondering if we should move uh, to Turkey or would you advise Malaysia? Absolutely not. No, it's not about moving. We don't change the condition of a people until we change themselves. Wherever the shaykhs go they see everything is on fire. That entire region of Turkey will be invaded by Russians. The whole of the area will be burnt and into major warfare. All of Arabia will be in major warfare, all of these areas. It's not an issue like Noah's son that you say a flood is coming and get on the ship and the son said, no I'll find somewhere else. This ship of safety is to connect the heart, to do the practice and to build this connection with Sultanul Nasirah. And we describe many times, you have to reach the state in which the hand reaches to the presence of Prophet and they have reached Sultanul Nasirah, the authorized Sultan of Allah and as a result of that protection that protection is with them wherever they are because it's not a land that's protected, right? It's insan that will be protected. So now we look at the fires in Maui, Roshagara understanding, the whole area is burnt, one house stayed. But for corrupt reasons maybe they didn't want to laser that guy's house. But just for learning purposes, when difficulty comes left and right can go if Allah wants that one individual to remain 
nothing can harm them because Allah will provide a shield of protection around them. Not a city, not a, a, a town, not a village. The protection is on insan where Allah becomes the wali of those whom are sincere, where Allah with all that's available to Allah which is everything and many spiritual beings and begin to come and facilitate a protection for that servant. Wherever they are, wherever the rizq is being provided to them. So this is not about learning and running, we're not a people who run from anything. You are exactly where Allah wants you to be. You have to go where your rizq and sustenance is, where you are gaining your sustenance then Allah clearly wants you there. Later you email if you're not getting your sustenance then you through email and through your spiritual practices the shaykh may tell you then look to other areas for your sustenance and your rizq. But this is not about running into an area and thinking Turkey will be safe, why would Turkey be safe? They have all of Russia is destined to enter and create immense wars. So this is about individuals being stay safe and that's why Prophet describes that Mecca, Medina and Sham has Sharif will be safe and we have talks on that. That insan has to be in that reality. They have to be Mecca, they have to be Medina and they have to be Sham as Sharif and there's talks on that whole reality. Not to live there but to be that. And so wherever they are, they are Mecca, Medina and Sham as Sharif moving. Because wa lakal karam na bani Adam, Allah's love is upon His creation, not upon structures and buildings. So as the building is not going to save you, is Allah's love for you that will save the building. The building doesn't save you from disaster. If Allah destined atomic war, you think there's a building that you can make that protect you from Allah's wrath? No. But if Allah loves you, you sit in a paper hut and you will protect the building, not the building protect you. Because hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakeel. This is a time of faith, faith for the servant, Allah loves me, I love Allah Allah's protection upon me. I will protect the building, not the building protect me. So this is a immense states of faith and understandings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Thank you for keeping us safe, Alhamdulillah. Sayyidi, are the recent storms in Mecca a sign of what's going to come? Not even. I don't think those are any, anything, it's just a storm. What's coming is, 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 is not something of our understanding. The recent fires is a sign of what's coming. Why would the wind in Mecca be the only sign from Allah There was just little inconvenience during their Umrah. But the, the signs of the fires, the, the, the Japanese are throwing nuclear waste into their ocean as if it was uh, just a backyard. It's like a neighbor getting rid of some trash, throws it in his backyard, he, they're uh, dumping millions of gallons of atomic waste into an ocean. So it means these are signs when Allah described the oceans will be boiling. What effect does this nuclear component have upon the oceans and the chemical composition of oceans and H2O and all this sort of things that we're seeing upon the earth and how they're fighting, how they're destroying, you know entire populations, entire regions are, are vanishing with war and nobody's saying anything. So these are the signs from Allah Sayyidi, a few people are asking similar questions. Sayyidi, how to deal with the heaviness of safar? If you can please speak on that. Salaam, this safar uh, shouldn't be heavy. It's psychological if you think something is heavy. He said before, it's a heba and immense lights are coming, knowledges, alimun hakim, 
knowledge and hikmah is coming. So these are for the believer to run to the cave, make their salawats, do their practices inshaAllah so that Allah can dress any type of testing and imtihan that comes. We said every ruq that the dog received granted him haybah. If the ruq didn't hit the dog he had no haybah and as a result of no haybah he had no use and would been sent away. Our use is in our dress. If you don't have a dress you become like crumbled leaves and bushes that will go with the fire. Otherwise what's the purpose of a person? If they don't have a use for the last days they crumble and burn away. So we're trying to make ourselves useful. Why? Ya Rabbi keep me for the sake of Mawlid and Nabi and we said every year, the Ya Rabbi keep me healthy, alive and my rizq so that I can observe Milad al Nabi and to facilitate the mawlids that we're doing. Grant me health until that mawlid so that I could have seen that beautific day. And as soon as the milad's finish, again asking Ya Rabbi for the sake of Milad al Nabi grant me the safety of the upcoming year so that once again I can perform these events and, and see these uh, beautific days. So it means I have to have a purpose in life. As a result of that purpose Allah to enrich us, to favour us, to heal us and to guide us. Otherwise no purpose then what, what, what? It answers itself. So we do the zikr, do the practices, go out and give food, make your salawats inshaAllah and every test that come to us is a haybah and Allah dressing us and perfecting us inshaAllah. So then we'll be patient through difficulties inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa May Allah give you long and healthy life. Uh, Sayyidi, Allah bless you. Sayyidi, if we don't know ourself, we can end up living a life pretending someone we are not. How to truly know ourself and what our Lord wants from us? Please forgive us. Sure, get the meditation book. That was the, the first step in meditation, who knows himself will know his Lord. So it has to be an arif of his nafs and then he'll be arif of his Rabb. So he has to be a knower of himself and knower of whatever authority is over him and that's only through the meditation. As soon as you meditate and apps to connect to the shaykh because you don't meditate alone with your nafs and whimsical thoughts. You meditate with the connection to the shaykh, asking about the heavens, not about yourself. What should I do like this? What should I do like that? No, just meditate that, be present with me, I'm nothing, send your light and your energy to my heart. I have to make my zikr, make my connection, let me to feel the energy, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Some people use meditation like it's a personal fortune teller. They sit and try to meditate, what should I do, I want this, I want to buy that, I want to get this, I want to do this, I want to be with this, I want to be like… That's then they're just only with their nafs because the shaykh is not sitting there like a fortune teller with the person, oh okay, okay, how about this, how about that. It has nothing to do with the dunya. It's only to be connected, to ask for energy and to be nothing. If you tariq al-adab, if you use it against that manner, Actually there's no shaykh there and when there's no shaykh there shaitan will enter and shaitan brings the nafs of the person and they basically are starting talking to their nafs. Should I do that? Oh yeah definitely. Should I buy that? Yeah oh hundred percent. Should I do like, oh yes everything. And they're just having a talk with themselves and Allah describe, have you seen those who made their desires their Lord, right? Why? Because if they're hawa. Their desire becomes the governing force of their guidance. But muraqaba, and that's why if you have the book you go back to the basics of muraqaba, was actually you connect and the only thing you ask is to be nothing. If you're nothing why are you asking a question? If you're nothing why are you asking about this or about that? You're supposed to be nothing. It's not about you, it's about to be nothing. 
When I'm nothing, I'm just connecting, I want to be nothing, I want to be nothing. Nasiyan mansiya, oh I wish there was something that just didn't exist so that I can be nothing and begin to feel energy. Then I'm connecting, making my zikr, making my aura, then I do a meditation for breathing and be nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Could you imagine that 90% of people love to complain and they want to actually make a connection and start complaining? You think a shaykh is actually sitting there in the ruhani and the, in the world of light and you know partaking in that? No, there's absolutely no shaykh there, shaitan then enters. And the person now just talking to themselves, complaining to themselves and that becomes nafsani. So the muraqab is very specific on what to achieve. I want to achieve a state of being nothing, I want to enter the oceans of power and energy that, Ya Rabbi make me to be nothing, to be nothing, to be nothing. And then they begin to feel more and more energy and they find themselves being annihilated in oceans of energy and never use that connection for anything personal, inshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Hope everything is well. I used to have a drug addiction problem and thanks to you I have overcome those issues alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, but I'm always, I'm always scared of falling back. Now Allah is sending me people in my life with the same issues. I don't know what to do, should I try to help them or stay away? Please help me and let me know what I should do. Yeah, you, you, we make ourselves to be strong, do the meditation, energy, all the same practices. Everybody comes from some sort of addiction, some addicted to different vices, to different technologies, to everything. Yeah, there's so many vices in people's lives. So to overcome those is to by making the connection, making the zikr, making the connection to the love of Prophet and at the same time directing people to the same remedy. Not to take them on as your clients but say, why don't you follow the shaykh, why don't you watch this video, why don't you get involved in this because you don't want that to become your circle of fellowship of people just talking bad and talking about the, the, the things they used to do and all, all of the glory days they had, that has its own sicknesses. So anyone who's coming to you then Allah as well give the same remedy to them that, oh why don't you follow this shaykh, why don't you come towards Islam, why don't you discipline yourself from all these things, don't talk bad, don't do these things, wash yourself. Keep yourself to be clean. So all of those types of guidance but not necessarily to make them your ten people and that becomes your fellowship because then that become the fellowship of the broken and, and not yet guided and can become its own harm and own difficulty. So like anyone coming we always say go to the videos and start watching and learning so that we can become stronger and not, not to, to give out what we don't have. So it's necessary for me to build my energy before I try to focus on helping other people's energies. But I can send them links and say, watch the videos and you know, watch the guidance. If you have any questions, email them at helpme, nurmuhammad.com, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, uh, my sibling is a regular follower of your blessed sohbah. They never miss a single zikr, however on occasion they get very angry and turn very rude and harsh towards parents, then justify the anger. How to understand this? Yeah, we have to understand that you have your own grave. So to, to talk about somebody else as if we don't have our own problems and our own issues to ask questions about, that in itself is a sign that we need help. When we're too focused on other people's problems and why they have like that. I remember that every time Mawlana would come into town there was a certain relative of mine that found it necessary to embarrass me in front of Mawlana to talk about my issues. And that wasn't nice and it was just something intentional, they probably got some sort of interest in doing that where they could have used that time to find about their own sickness. And that's the danger, when somebody's not interested in finding about their own sickness 
but they are interested in finding about the sickness of others. So that has its own aha like, why? Why, why would I want to know about the sickness of other people? Does it make me happy they're not right? Does it make me to be concerned too much of other people? So in life everything was about, I have my grave and I may see it tomorrow or I may see it in six weeks or six months or sixty years but I have my own grave and it doesn't fit anyone else and Allah is only going to ask me about my grave. If I have that understanding then I can reach towards righteousness and piety inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If those aren't assigned to a wali murshid, what happens to them in regards to guidance? Please forgive me. Watch social media. Very clear. I told you, social media is like the fool on the hill that can look at the whole city and say they're all crazy. You, you don't need a newspaper anymore. You look, and one after another social media you come to conclusion, we're in trouble, Look, this world is, is in really bad shape. So those are the signs of people whom have no wali and no murshid because those people whom are self-taught and uh, even they went through accredited universities and they think they're alims and they're muftis and whatever titles they have and all their guidance they think they have, look how they talk. Look how they act and react with people, look at the harshness in their speech, look at all of the mannerisms and characteristics and think that none of these shaykhs that we know taught like that. You know when we were with our shaykh we had no permission to open our mouth and say anything. I couldn't imagine what he would do if I did and if they sent him a video like, oh look him in the park and he's yelling at everybody in the park he would probably throw me out of the tariqah. So no one whom is guided with the shaykh and, and has guidance is permitted to do that. So you see that when Allah is not guiding somebody they become those guys, that they become self-guided and self-righteous and they don't exhibit nice character and they don't exhibit softness. Allah can guide whomever He likes. Maybe after 10 years of doing this in the park Allah may guide them. We pray that Allah guides all those whom are sincere. But we look at it like an experiment and an exam and in like a lab or science class that this is pretty bad the condition of this nation, look how they talk, look, look how they act. And then when we see it we say, Alhamdulillah wa shukran illah that Allah is guiding us, Ya Rabbi don't become tired of me. Don't, don't turn your, your nazar for me, don't turn this light and, and love away from my heart that I just sat and did nothing with it. That's out of that fear that Allah will take away what He's given, they're trying to always be inspired to do more, make the app, get the charity, make more wells. We're at over 2,000 wells, we give hundreds of more qurban, do hundreds of more things out of keep the faith within my heart and my tongue ability to flow from these realities. Means we have to be in a continuous state in asking Allah that grant us hilman mazid, grant us more from your oceans of generosity. And Allah's reply is, why? What did you do with it? And that's why then the beginning of this talk was faith in action, why I have to grant you? Why you want uh, this? Why you want that? Say, because I want to do in the way of Islam, I want to do for the sake of Prophet I want to make more wells, I want to do more of this, I want to have more of these realities to come out. So as a result then that becomes the reality of the servant. They have to ask Allah what is it that you want it for, inshaAllah. Good, inshaAllah subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ila al-mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa 
wa bi siri surat al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.